but it's also the argument about the speed of change. And in terms of the speed of change, we have to recognize it, it must feel like things are changing now on a daily basis. The pace of globalization, the use of high-speed fiber optic networks, satellites, the internet, and mobile devices has increased the pace of communication and information exchange. How many of you now feel terrified when the battery in your cell phone runs out, as if somehow you're no longer tethered to the mothership? Oh my God, I can't reach someone right now. We never were able to reach people in the 1980s, and we somehow made it through. Uh, I don't, I, it's amazing how people freak out now if they don't have a cell phone, because they're so used to being tethered um, electronically, and we just got to be careful about it. Um, the picture behind me is of a man that we can kind of thank for the speed of change elements. His name is Gordon Moore, and he is one of the founders of the Intel chip making company. This is a kind of nice, you know, natural pose of Gordon after he became a billionaire, Gordon, um, in the river. Uh, but he came up with a very important observation in 1965 that helps address the rate of progress in the computer age. And it, is and it is called Moore's Law. And what Gordon Moore observed in 1965 was that the number of transistors on an integrated circuit for minimum component cost doubles every 24 months. So this is Moore's Law. It's one of those just, this is one of those rare, you just got to kind of memorize it. I'll say it again. Um, see, see if it makes more sense the second time. But Moore's law is the empirical observation that the number of transistors on an integrated circuit board for minimum component cost doubles every 24 months. But what that means in practice is that every 24 months, a computer chip for the same cost is half the size and twice as fast. Now that's something that's useful. So every two years, the basic circuitry of a computer is half the size and twice as fast. That has some nice advantages. That's why an iPhone doesn't look like a Buick in your pocket. 